everyone, Angela Pedarova, I'm so happy to see you today. As you know, I'm the owner of Julia Pedarova Cakes, Sweet Art Master Supply, Sweet Art Master Sugar Flower School, Sweet Art Master Sugar Flower Competition, and I'm the author of Sweet Botany Book. So, botanically correct sugar flowers is my specialty. Today, my short video is about greenery. Before I'm sharing with you a couple tips and tricks about greenery, I want to tell you more about botanically correct sugar flowers in general. So, your botanically correct sugar flowers should be botanically correct as possible. They should look like real flowers. And making them, you should use botanically correct cutters, planers, and molds. For me, making botanically correct sugar flowers in one hand is very easy, in other, the way has a lot of nuances. As you know, sugar flowers, they are part of cake decorating, and cake decorating is the part of art. It is very difficult to be a successful artist when you do replicas from other successful artists, right? In our field, you are very successful artist when you do perfect replicas from Mother Nature. To achieve this result, I recommend to conduct small research before you start to make flowers. And for this, it's very useful to follow some florist photographers and florists. Now I am sharing with you a couple tips and tricks about spring greenery. For my short demo, I have a dogwood, ivy, blueberry, and lilac leaves. My first advice, when you only start to make your leaves, mix a base yellow-green gum paste in certain proportions to get the color of the bottom of the leaves. Why it's very important? Because if you have already right color, you shouldn't dust bottom sides. This means you finish the dusting process faster. Speaking about botanically correct planers, dogwood leaves are a great example. There are spring dogwood leaves planers. They have right size and pattern and they can be used with dogwood flowers. You can find larger leaves sold by other suppliers. But these leaves cannot be used with flowers like this. Dogwood has larger leaves in summer. In summer, dogwood doesn't have flowers at all. So, the size of leaves for dogwood is very important. For most spring leaves, I recommend to use green, lime green, Apple green colors, I very rare use kiwi, also for edges I work with yellow, soft yellow and orchid petal dust. I recommend to start dusting leaves from the base to the top. I use this approach for all leaves. Please pay attention. Now. I'm adding lime green petal dust on a paper towel surface with soft brush. I'm stirring the dust. The dust should have an even consistency. I'm starting to dust spring leaves from ivy leaves. Again, we work from the base to the top. I'm using as main color lime green petal dust. Please don't cover edges of leaves with this main color. Next step, I'm adding mix of yellow and soft yellow petal dust to leaves edges to achieve natural result. Next is dogwood leaf. I think I told before 
Dogwood is one of my favorites. I love the pattern of leaves and petals. And one of the best moments dogwood leaves can be used without flowers. Whole tutorial about botanically correct dogwood you can find on my YouTube channel. I am not dusting these dogwood edges with soft yellow colors as I did with ivy leaves. It is very rare when fresh foliage has some kind of damage and imperfection, but sometimes it does happen. To show this effect on this dogwood leaf, I am adding a couple touches of yellow and brown petal dust to leaf edges, and after that I am dusting the edges with mix of yellow colors. When we dust blueberry leaves, we use the same approach. Mix of green, lime green and apple green petal dust can be used for these leaves. Only one moment about blueberry I want to emphasize. Spring blueberry branch includes only leaves and no berries. The last spring leaves I want to talk about today are lilac leaves. They are darker than most spring leaves. To achieve this dark green color, I added forest green petal dust. When you work with leaves with almost not existing pattern like lilac leaves, you need to know a couple tips and tricks about them. First, don't press very hard with your brush. You can leave bright spots on leaf surface. Second, the brush should be very, very soft. When you work with edges of lilac leaves, Please use approaches which I already showed you. After dusting, leaves should be glazed or steamed. Which way to choose and why, I am planning to explain in my next videos. I hope you enjoyed our short video today. More information about botanically correct sugar flowers you can find in my book. Don't forget to subscribe, add your likes. See you soon with love, Juliet.